Hi guys, this is section 7.4, which is applications of linear systems. Uh, we're going to put some real life problems into this. Um, as a reminder, systems of linear equations is when you have two or more linear equations. So again, system means two or more. And then we need to solve by how we did in 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, whether it's graphing, substitution, or elimination or linear combo. So the three types of examples they're going to give you in this section. Real-world problems with values, for example, percentages, points, or money value, etc. The second one is a break-even point. This is for like a business model if you're going to buy and sell. So here's a quick example. You can see in my graph I'm only using the first quadrant. Here's the zero, zero, the origin. The red line is the expense line. So for example, if I'm going to make um, wooden chairs and sell it. This is how much it'll cost me to buy the materials, and then it'll cost me some to make each one. And that's why it goes up. The, sl the slope is going positive, because it costs so much to make each one. The income is the green line, so it starts at zero, zero. And yes, I, I put it off of the black line, just so you can see it. And again, if I don't sell anything, my income is zero. But I, I want to, if you notice, I have a steeper line, because I want to sell it for more than it costs to make. So if it costs me, $2 to make each one, there's my $2 slant or my $2 slope, but I should be selling them for $5 or more, anything more than $2 to get a steeper slope. This black dot is called the break-even point. That's where I, I'm not losing or making any money. I'm breaking even. So you can see anything to the left of it, the red line is higher, therefore I'm losing money or I owe money. The break-even point, I'm even. Anything to the right of the black line, and I'm making profit because you can see the green line is higher than the red, so now I'm making money. So that's how business models work. Um, again, you want to sell it for more than it costs, and that's why it's steeper. The last one is real-world problems with wind or current. Yes, we had some um, equations in Chapter 3, I think, uh, but that was only one equation. Now we're going to do double equations. You need to remember the distance formula, which is distance equals rate times time. And then here is a quick example of the rate. If my wind is blowing this way, and you can see the arrow, if I'm going with the wind, you can see if my airspeed, so if I'm in a plane, my airspeed, at, um, the wind speed will help me. So it's the airspeed plus the wind speed will equal to my ground speed. Okay, so it'll be double as fast. And against it, if I'm going this way like the blue says, and the wind is going this way, kind of going into the wind, or against the current if you're going up a stream, um, it would be negative W plus A, or if I rearrange it, A minus W, and that's my ground speed. So my rate with, this, with the wind or the current is A plus W, the airspeed plus the wind speed, and going against it is the airspeed minus the wind speed, because I'm going against it. Or very, if it was current, it would be um, your speed plus the current, or speed minus the current. Okay, so here's my first example of a real world real world problem with values. So Sierra wants to make gold earrings for all of her friends. She just happens to have a couple blocks of gold lying around and this block is 20% of gold. The rest is all uh, um, other metals and this block is 60% gold mixed with other metals. She realizes that the best gold mixture for earrings is 52% gold. So what she needs to do is cut a chunk of this bar and put it in my melting pot, cut a chunk of this bar and blend it to get a 52% blend from the 20 and 80. And she needs 80 grams. So how much of each block does she need? Okay, so the first one is using the weight. And I'm not sure if you can see, but this is my X block and Y block. So it's gonna be X plus Y is equal to 80 grams. Pretty simple. The second one is going to be 0.2 times the x plus 60% or 0.6 times the y is equal to 0.52 and that's going to be times 80. And this is the tricky part of this. Okay, You need to put the 0.52 times the 80, not just point equals 0.52. Okay. Um, now we can solve it by elimination or linear combo. I wouldn't graph this out if I were you. I'm going to solve this one by substitution. and I'll, I'm sorry, the substitution or elimination. Uh, I'm going to do this one by substitution. I'll do the next one by elimination so you can see both ways. I'm going to rearrange this first one 
So that is x equals 80 minus y. I'm just going to minus y from both sides and go to that. Okay. So now I'm going to take this 80 minus y and put it into this x here, since x equals that. So when I rewrite it, I can rewrite it as 0.2 times 80 minus y, and then plus 0.6y is equal to, and this becomes 41.6. Okay. Now I need to distribute this, and I'm going to get uh, 16 minus 0.2y plus 0.6y is equal to 41.6. I'm going to minus 16, and I'm going to combine this in the same one, minus 16. This becomes 0.4y is equal to, and that's 0 0.6, 25.6. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.4, and I'm going to get y is equal to 64 grams. Okay. But if you notice, it said, how much of each do I need? So now I need to take this y and put it into that equation. So now I'm going to get um, x is equal to 80 minus the 64. So x is equal to 16 grams. So what this is saying is I need 16 grams from this block and 64 grams from this block. Mix it up into there, and I'll get a 52% blend with 80 grams. Okay. Uh, I, I know, I, sorry, I see that glare there. That's a 0.4 over here. Okay, so here's the next example of a real-world problem. So Toa sold 16 pounds of fish. The ahi was $10 a pound. The aku was $8 a pound. He made a total of $146. How many pounds of each did he sell? So here's my ahi for $10. Here's my aku for $8. His name is Slopoke. His name is Sashimi. So I need to write um, two equations. Okay. So the first one is the poundage. So again, it would just be, I'll call this on P for poke. So P plus, I'll call that S for Sashimi. S is equal to 16. So poke plus sashimi is equal to 16. The next one I need to do is with the value. So if um, poke was $10, it's 10p plus aku was 8, or the sashimi was 8, so 8s is equal to 146. Okay, so the first one was the poundage, the second one was the dollar value. If you want to put the dollars to help you line them up, that's fine. Okay, that way you can see the values. Now this one I'm going to use elimination, since I did the first one by substitution. So I'm going to multiply this by a negative 8, because I want to eliminate my 8. Eliminate my 8. So I'm going to get negative 8p minus 8s is equal to, and when I do this, don't forget that one over there, negative 128. Okay. These eliminate, and I'm left with 2p is equal to, that looks like a 18. Okay. So divide by 2. P is equal to 9 pounds. So I need 9 pounds of poke from ahi. Okay. Now I need to find how much sashimi. So you need to find S. Your homework check for number 1 is to finish this problem. Okay. So finish it up. I have it started for you right here. I want you to show the work. So show this work and find S. Show the work to find S. Okay, that's homework check number one. And then go ahead and put it on Ed mode. Okay, the next st style of problems or different uh, type of problem is going to be the break even. So here's my first one. I got two different ones. So now P are going to make CDs. So you can see my little CD there. And I see the glare, so let me switch. They're going to make CDs. It cost $12,500 for studio time and $2.50 to make each CD. So if you remember that example that I drew when I did this, here's your 12,500 startup costs, and then it cost $2.50, so there's your expenses, okay? And then it, you're gonna sell it for $7.50, so again, you're gonna start at zero, zero, because if you don't sell anything, you got nothing. But now I'm gonna sell it for $7.50, 
and that's my income line. Okay, so you can see it's steeper because my slope is steeper. It's 750 each versus 250. There's my break even point. What this is asking for is how many CDs do I need to sell to break even? So I need to write two equations. Okay, the first equation is going to be my expense equation. So I'll, I'll list it as an E for expenses. Okay, it's going to be Y is equal to, and if I look at this, it costs 12,500. So 12,500 plus 2.5 or 2.50 if I want to X. Okay, my income equation, Y is equal to, and there's no Y intercept, so it's just 7.50 X. You can drop off the zero, that's fine. And in this case, because I have a Y equals Y equals already, I'm just gonna do substitution. I'm going to take this and put substitute it into that y. So I'm going to get 12,500 plus 2, I'm sorry, that should be a 2, 2.5x is equal to 7.5x. So I substituted it in. Now when I solve it, I'm just going to solve it with a different color pen. I just got a minus 2.5x from both sides. 12,500 is equal to 5x. I'm going to divide by 5. And I'm going to get 2,500 CDs is equal to x. So my breaking even point, I need to sell, or now PO needs to sell 2,500 CDs just to break even. After that, it'll be gravy or profit. Okay, so that's the first one. Here is my second break-even example. Lauren owes the bank $7, but she's going to deposit $4 a week. Micah has $9 in savings, and he's going to deposit $2 a week. How long will it take Lauren to catch up to Micah? So if you see my little drawing here, Micah's happy because he has money. And Lauren's sad because she has none. But that's okay, Lauren. You're going to be putting more money in, and eventually you have more than him. Okay, so I need two equations. The first one is going to be Lauren. So I'll use red for Lauren. So y is going to equal to, she deposits $4 a week, so 4x. But here's the part, she owes $7. So it's going to be minus 7. Okay, whereas Micah in blue, is going to be y is equal to, he's going to deposit 2x, but he has $9 already. Okay. And again, since it's y equals y equals, I would substitute, I would take this and substitute it into there, so I get 4x minus 7 is equal to 2x plus 9. Okay. And now I'm just going to sub, uh, solve it by substitution. So I'm going to minus 2x, minus 2x, and I get 2x minus 7 is equal to 9, plus 7, plus 7. 2x is equal to 16, divide by 2, and x is equal to 8 weeks. So what this is saying is, anytime up to 8 weeks, Michael will have more money. At 8 weeks, they'll be even. Anything after eight weeks, Lauren will have more money because she's putting in more money every week. Hopefully that makes sense. So it'll look something like this where Lauren actually started here, but she goes up here. here. Micah starts here, but he doesn't go. So after eight weeks, this is an eight here. Lauren would have, this is Lauren. She would have more money than Micah. Okay. If you want to know how much she had, just put it into one of these two equations. So say you had y is equal to 2 times 8 plus 9. That's 16 plus 9, which is $25. So after 8 weeks, they will both have $25. That's how the break-even point works. Okay. The last one is the tricky one. Or not tricky, it could be a little more harder. So it's a real-world problem with wind and currents. So I'm doing one wind and one current example. If you're going to fly from Miami to San Francisco... 
So you, here's my map. And last time people were teasing my map because it didn't look like the United States. So I made sure I made one like it. So you can see there's California, there's Texas, and there's Florida, and there's Maine up there. And I put a little dip in there for the the rivers or whatever you call it, Great Lakes and all that. But here's Miami. Here's San Fran. If you're flying from Miami to San Fran against the wind, because you can see the wind, wind arrows is going that way. Um, it'll take you 6.5 hours. You're going to go 2,600 miles, and you're going to go against the wind. Okay. The other one is going to be from San Fran to Miami, same average airspeed, but this time it's going to be 5.2 hours with the wind. So we want to find the average wind speed. Okay. So this is where we're going to do ours with the wind. So distance with the or let's do against the wind first because that's the top one. So I'll do it in purple. Um, it's going to be distance, which is 2,600 miles, equals the rate against the wind, if you remember, was a minus W from the beginning from the beginning of the video. It was A minus W. And then our um, time is going to be 6.5 hours. Okay. The With the wind in green, sorry, I'll change it. The green so with the wind is going to be 2600 miles but our rate this time is going to be a plus w and our time is going to be 5.2 okay. now when we solve it when we solve it um, we want to I'll show you a shortcut in solving this so this one was against Instead of distributing it this in and doing it that way, I could just divide both sides by 5.2. And if I divide by 5.2, I get 500 is equal to, and this cancels out, A plus W. And on this side, if I divide both sides by 6.5, since this is all in parentheses, it's like saying this times 6.5, so I can just divide by 6.5 and that gets rid of that, I would get 400 is equal to A minus W. And now I can drop off the parentheses since I got rid of that. Now if I just line it up, I just move it down there. Now I can solve it by linear combo or elimination because I can see my W's just cancel out. And I'm left with 100 is equal to 2A. If I divide by 2, I get 50 is equal to A, and A is my airspeed, but I'm looking for my wind speed, the W. So I can take either one of these equations um, and put them in. So if I said 500 is equal to A plus W, and if I said A was 50, I can just minus 50 from both sides and get 450 miles per hour is equal to my wind speed. Okay, so the, the wind speed is 450, the air speed is 50, and that's how that works. Okay, the last one is very similar, but instead of air, I'm going to use current. Okay, so here's my example, and I'll try and get it a little closer. Um, Kilo, he paddles downstream with a current. She goes 18 miles in three hours. Okay. Cavelu paddles back upstream against the current in 4.5 hours, the same distance. Find the average paddling speed of Kelly and Cavelu in still water. So find the rate and find the average speed of the current as well. So if you look at this, here's my beautiful picture. Um, you can see in the first picture, Kelly is smiling because it's easy and Cavelu is cruising in the back sleeping. And in the second picture, you can see Cavallo struggling, and Kelo, he gets to relax. Okay, isn't that cute? Yeah, it is. I know. <laughs> so here's how you do your two um, equations. So again, we're going to go with and without. So Kelo, he is with, and Cavallo is against. Not without. I'm sorry. It should be against. Okay. So again... D equals RT. So distance is going to be 18 miles equals rate. It's going to be 
the paddling speed. Uh, so you can say plus the current, and the time is going to be three. Cavelu okay. is going to be again d equals rt. His is still 18 miles because he's going to get it, but this time he's going to be his speed minus the current, and then his time was 4.5. Okay, so when I solve these again, instead of distributing, I'm going to divide by 4.5. I'm going to divide this by 4.5 to get rid of that. And if I divide that by 4.5, I get 4 is equal to S minus C. This one, if I divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that, I get 6 is equal to S plus C. And now I can just move this down here. And get 4 is equal to S minus C. And you can see that I am going to eliminate. And I get 10 is equal to 2s, divide by 2, and 5 miles per hour is equal to, that's their paddling speed in still water. Now we need to find C for the current. Okay. And your homework check is going to be to finish this problem, to so find C. I already found S for you. Okay, so that's section 7.4, and I hope this helps.